shoot that thing. Hey folks, it's Corn Holio today. How y'all doing today? Uh, it's been a couple of months. I've had uh, lots of visitors at the house. Uh, my son, daughter, and granddaughter have been staying with me for a couple of months. It's been hard to get out here, working a lot. So I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna take a day, go to the range, and show y'all what it is about. This is a Springfield Armory. You see that? The four inch champion operator in 45 ACP. Beautiful gun. I'll have a little tabletop on it when we get done shooting today. We'll take a look at it. I did order me some grips, some G10 grips from a company that I buy from frequently called Clonimus. And the fit and finish on this gun was absolutely flawless. I'm gonna see if I can get the end of this. That thing, the bottom of these, this is gonna, I'm gonna put a magwell on it. These, the bottom here lines up on that magwell so perfectly, it's not even funny. Like he had this gun in his hand and made these grips just for it somewhere down in Florida. Anyway, first shots we got today are gonna to be from some Winchester USA Ready, some Remington White Box, and some Fiocchi. So, this is not a new gun. I got it at a, at a, at a my local gun store. This will be my first shot out of it ever. So let's see what we can get. We'll start out here about 15, 16 yards and we'll see how well the sights are. It, oh, that ain't good. Definitely gonna have to do some work on that and figure out why in the world this thing is not, it's loading it, but it's letting the hammer come back down. Let's hold it up now. Uh, out there at the big square, that's 20, that's uh, 30 yards. Huh, well that was weird. It's the first time in my life I have ever shot a Springfield Armory and had any issues with it. Let's try it there to the long one at 40 yards. Did it again. It's letting the hammer. I can't tell where I'm hitting. Yeah, it's not good. More than likely somebody has been, somebody's been messing with it and didn't know what they were doing. Seems to be on pretty good there. Let's try my little Olight laser. We'll see how that works. Let's see if the laser is on. I can't even see it, it's too bright. Yeah, it's dead on it. Dumbass, I'll try the middle one. Oh, last one. I'm off my game. I haven't been shooting in a couple of months. But we will definitely take her apart when we get home and see if that has anything to do with it. The laser's on. All right, let's try. I still want to hit that. I can't tell if I'm shooting low or high. All right, let's go. Laser's dead center. It's shooting high. And there ain't a whole lot I can do about it. All right, I'm gonna put it on this other one here. I don't know if y'all can see it yet or not, but it's right. Let's 
you're shooting high with this. Huh. All right. I need to come down and drop that down. Anyway, let's see. I'm right there. Where is that hitting? I'm in, aiming dead center. Looks like it's hitting high to the left. Oh, I hit him that time. Uh, might have to cut this one short and figure out what in the world is going on with um with the hammer falling after a shoot. I'll have to do some adjusting. Might have to buy some parts. Whew, I need some water. You know what? I do have some Sig V Crown here. Let me load that up. And we'll see how that shoots. Now that is about where I'm aiming. Oh, he's off to the left. He's shooting left. Let's try the head. Dead center of that head. Sight. All right, right there. In the middle. Yeah, that was good. I mean, he's about a fraction of an inch to the left when I really, really aim. And he is up and down, I guess is about right. Shooting a brick, brick round. Let's put some Winchester. We'll load up some Winchester rounds here. We'll try that again. I am not on my game today, that's for damn sure. I am to the shoulder. He's not too far off. Uh, I don't know what you call close enough for police shooting or whatever. It's definitely Hitting all in the body areas that I'm aiming at. Oh, how are, I didn't even bring my speed loader. I had another bag in the house to grab and I didn't grab it. So I didn't bring any pencils to mark targets. I didn't bring my paint. Uh, didn't bring any of that. So it's probably just me I didn't bring the little tools to change the sight of the laser, but it's close enough. All right, let's go back to... I don't know if you can see it, what I'm shooting at from this... Yeah, you can. Way out there. I hit a stick or something. I don't know if I'm hitting the target or not, or if I'm just hitting the daggum little stick. Whew. I like that light. I'm gonna walk down here right quick and take a look at that 40, 42 yards, 44 yards. 
Oh, it's a paper plate. I thought it was a metal target. I hit him one time, hit the wood a couple times. It is shooting high, so when I aimed low, I hit right here and split the wood. Here, but I hit the wood right here and I hit it right here, which also hit the wood. I thought that was a steel target. That's a paper plate. <sighs> <sighs> Make sure we don't have no snakes. Under it. All right, that target I just picked up is uh, 35 yards. It's the square one. The paper plate is 42 yards. The two square ones are 30, and we have two 25s, or two 20s. And these little front ones are all like at 15, 16 yards. So we got 15, 20, 30, 35, and 40 for the plate. Um, I'm just gonna load up the rest of this Winchester. Um, the USA Ready brand red box. I have some Remington white box. I got some Fiocchi too here. So, at least I know I got a few things I got to look at when I get home. I will most definitely let y'all know about that. I'll look them all over. Eight and eight, all right. All right, and there we go. Aim it at the bottom, and I'm hitting them. <laughs> Knocked the rim over first shot. I think I hit the paper plate again. Hitting it, it's not tanking. And there we go again. <laughs> Hitting 35 and then you are think. Ain't hard, but that's a bigger target. Anyway, I think that's enough to know that I need to do some work on it before I can put this in my carry rotation. Because I can't have it sliding back and hitting the, and it's empty and clear now. I can't have it sliding back and hitting the, uh, cocking the hammer back and then the hammer and not staying back. So, he's holding forward now. All right, I already function check it. It will not fire. It will not fire when it's on safety. Take safety off, press that, and it fires. That hammer spring. It has a little half cock in it. That's good. Feels like it's got a weak hammer spring. Yeah. And I believe I got some other. There's another catch. There's a click right here. And it goes forward on that. But there's a second catch which is like the little half cock that a lot of Springfields have. And then full cock. I don't know, it just feels like the hammer spring is, is weak. So I'll take a look at the sear and everything when we get the thing home. Uh, I am still happy with it. It has all the bells and whistles. It has uh, ambidextrous safety. It has the uh, beaver tail grip hump. It has a skeletonized hammer and trigger. It has a rail on it. Night sights, which they're close enough on, but it is high, so I may have to get another front sight. But I hate that. Oh, I hate that this is a little high. But again then, folks, it could be me. Like I said, I hadn't been shooting in a while. 
Um, it's fairly tight. There's just the ever so slightest movement in the slide on top of the rails, which is barely here when you shake it. A little bit. The lockup's good on it. A lot of good stuff about it. I can fix that sear. It's not a problem with it hammer not holding it back. Could be somebody tried to uh, do a trigger job on it, didn't know what they were doing, and uh, got it too light or filed off too much. But I got ways to check that and I got the tools to house. So anyway, yeah, that, that, that hammer spring, eh, it doesn't feel that bad. The trigger pull on it's very light, has a little bit of take up. I can adjust that out. Just doesn't sound like it's hitting hard enough. Anyway, somebody might have tinkered with it. I'll take a look when I get home. Anyway, that's it for the range. We'll go back to the house, do some tabletop, and take a look at it. See you in a minute. Hey folks, it's Cornholio. This is our tabletop portion of the champion operator, Springfield Army. 45 caliber. Y'all are seeing this gun here, Springfield Armory. Um, I put on some uh, G10 grips made by Klonimus. I talked about this earlier today. Get the, uh, look at that. I mean, that is just dead, even, smooth. I even couldn't even put a straight end on it, but that's just perfect. It's like he took this gun and made it for it. Okay, so like I said earlier today, this is a Springfield Operator Champion Operator 45 caliber. I bought this uh, used at a gun store and earlier today I was out shooting it. I'd already taken it apart and did a little quick safety inspection on the thing. Anytime you buy a used gun, you want to do that. Um, and I was having a hammer follow, okay? Let's do something here. Let's check. <clears throat> and see what our trigger pull is as it sits right now. Okay, we are at 3.75, less than four. Let's try it again. That was a little over four, but I think it was dragging. Just a shade under four. So between three and a half and four pounds is where I always like mine. All right, well, that's pretty much it. I will take it back out of the range tomorrow and we'll check and see what we did. If any of the stuff that I've done helped. What I saw when I took it apart earlier and told y'all before I did all the work on it, um, I did see the sear was off. Uh, the angles were off on the sear. There were shiny spots and the, <coughs> the hammer engagement tabs, uh, only one of them had shiny stuff on it. <coughs> so I don't know, this gun looks to be amazing shape. I mean, yeah, there you see the normal wear and tear or the rub marks on the, uh, on the barrel here where it's kind of little, little wear marks in here where it's been cycled. Okay. Uh, I didn't see a lot of wear on the inside of it. The lockup on this, I mean, I'm trying to wiggle it. There's a little bit of wiggle, but you see that in all of your average high ends. I mean, if it didn't have any wiggle at all, it would be, it'd be really tight and it wouldn't shoot a lot of different types of rounds. This one shot, uh, I think it was V crown. I had some Winchester. Uh, red box, some Remington white box, and some Fiocchi. I don't think I shot any of the Fiocchi today. This is your Springfield Armory um, 
champion operator 45 caliber bull barrel four inch the champion i believe designates this is a four inch um like kimber pro is a four inch uh this is what we call the commander um we have the full five inch government the commander is a four inch the officer is a three inch with a shortened handle this thing has a full size grip okay it will hold uh, a full magazine of seven rounds or you can get the wilson combat 47 d's and it'll hold eight rounds so this is a full size grip uh, frame it is an aluminum frame uh, for light because this is the lightweight version <clears throat> not really a big fan of aluminum frames but they've had great success and people have put thousands upon thousands of rounds through guns like this with no problems um, it locks back good i like it i like it a lot uh, it's really clean uh, it had the springfield armory grips on it that i think i have in here yep these are the beautiful wood Springfield Armory grips that you see here. Beautiful. Springfield Armory since 1794. These grips, you've all seen them. Um, I'll stick it on here just so you'll get an idea of what it looked like. This is it. Had stainless uh, screws in them. But, I mean, no, those, those come with, they had the, the black screws in them. I like magazine wells on my 1911s. So I bought these G10 Clonimus grips. For one thing, I don't really want to mess these up. That's just too pretty. Uh, this fits on here, drop in. Nothing interferes with anything. I, I'll shine lights in here and looked at it. They just fit. KLO N I M U S. Uh, highly recommend them off eBay. Uh, the grips for this particular gun, I mean, Jesus, that is just perfectly smooth and even. It's like he built, I've said this before, but it's like he built these grips using this gun, this gun right here as a model. This one right here does. It's a little stiff getting on right here, but there's a burr on the grip screw housing here. I'm, I'm losing my mind. It's late at four o'clock in the morning of what these, the nomenclature is, but the bushings, the grip bushings, uh, there's a little, when, when they put them in, there's a little right there. So that could be why this doesn't really go on there really, really smooth on the right side you get it over here and line them up down here and they push on great uh, it doesn't hinder that at all the grip safety uh, the ambidextrous uh, safety tang on this side it's got a cutout for that it's also got a cutout on the bottom as you can see here if you want to put one of the the older Wilson combat or the Rock Island Army is real good with them they have the little hook tangs that hook on your bushings for a magazine well, uh, and I do have one. I could put that on there if I wanted to. But I went ahead and put these on it, even though my mainspring housing with Magwell will be here Thursday or Friday, and I'll put that on. But I just, I've always liked the magazine wells. Um, I like the Wilson Combat Mags, the 47Ds. Uh, they fit up in these Magwells perfectly. Uh, it doesn't rub you, but this is flat for the Magwing, Ma for Magwing, Magwell. Fit and finish on this gun is really, really good. Uh, it has night sights on it, the Novak style, and it shoots just a tad high. Uh, I will put it on a bench rest tomorrow and see if that might not be me, <laughs> which very well could be. But anyway, folks, I'm going to cut this off now. Uh, I will add a little bit, maybe before this night portion tabletop portion i might add the video tomorrow see if we got that fixed with what i did today okay how about we see 
If any of the work I did yesterday is gonna help us out, we'll do a little bench rest. Huh, that's not gonna work. I need a higher bench rest. But anyway, we're shooting Remington. We're shooting some Winchester and some Fiocchi. This is the uh, Remington here. We're gonna try it first. And I wanna see how well this thing does if I can get a bench rest here. <sighs> get out of here, B, damn. Little target. Ah, dead on. Get out of here, B, god dang it. Y'all see this thing around my ear? It's a dirt dauber. And I don't know why, or it's a horse fly. All right, All right middle target, we're gonna see. Hey. Astigmatism. <laughs> Looks like we're hitting pretty good. And that's it. Okay. We're going to see, we're just trying to find out if the work I did on it yesterday is going to help us um, shoot fast with it. I don't know. Yeah, he's, that's me. Ah. Oh. Okay, I'll see you next time. He didn't drop none of them. I think we fixed it. Ah, dang it. That is a horse fly. <clears throat> you don't like it when you kick back, do you? Piece of shit. And this is the magazine that came with it. And it's got a dent in it. Doesn't seem to be affecting it. I might work that dent out. Let's see if we can see it in here. It's right here above my, right there at my finger, compared to another one that doesn't have a dent in it. Anyway, it, it fired them fine. All right. God dang it, get out of here. Okay, this right here is a Fiocchi and it is hollow point. Let's see how it uh, handles hollow point. Handles that just fine. How about we mix them up a little? Put a little bit of this, a little bit of that in it.
let's see how it does with just a bunch of bunch of different brands same target That one. Still shooting a little high. But we have yet to have a light strike. Like I thought yesterday, I thought I was having uh, uh, hammer follow. Uh, got to looking at the video last night. Realized it was not hammer follow that uh, pardon me. The uh, what was actually happening was light strikes. And remember, I said yesterday I thought that uh, hammer spring felt weak. It was weak. It was a very light one. I don't know if it came in it or somebody put it in it, but it didn't like it, and it was light striking like crazy. So I had an extra Kimber. Um, hammer spring from a different gun and I put that in there and immediately felt good and tight good and tight uh, and that did the trick that did it all right how about let's just load up some more of this Remington I'm out of Winchester now that's what I was shooting yesterday so we're out of that we got Remington UMC pistol revolver cartridges, white box. I don't want that magazine because it does have that kink in it. All right, let's see. We're going to go out to the 30 yard square. Okay. We got the 30 yard square. And I'm just going to shoot. I don't even know if I'll hit one of them, okay? It probably won't. I just want to see how fast I can fire it. Like I said, I don't know if I even hit one of those. Didn't really care. I just wanted to see how fast this burger would fire if we got him fixed. The only way to know if we got him fixed is to do that again. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Like I said, I don't know if I hit a single thing. I don't really care. I believe I have achieved what I set out to achieve. I believe we have ended the light hammer strikes and put a couple more boxes of these to it and I believe I'll feel safe putting this in my carry. Rotation. All right, same target. I had eight dings on that one. Not quite as fast. Got six more. Oh, the Remington left, and it is doity stuff. So we'll be cleaning this bad boy again today. But I feel I have a, a whole lot more confidence in this gun now. Uh, like I said, you know, when you buy a used gun, you know what you're getting because you're buying it, but you don't know what you're getting. You don't know what someone else has done to it, if they have tinkered with it, if they had tried their hand and it's i got them it's not loaded i don't know if they've tried their hand at gunsmithing i don't know if they have tried to do a trigger job on it you just never know about these things until you get them out and shoot them so to buy a used gun and immediately throw it into your repertoire of guns that you're going to carry and shoot and protect your life and the life of your loved ones and the life of anybody else who might happen to need your assistance. You don't know until you come out here and do exactly what we're doing. You have to shoot these guns. You have to shoot them. You have to know what you're getting into. 
and you need to run them through a gamut like this a couple hundred rounds at least i like to put 500 rounds through a gun before i carry it i also polish the breech face that's just something i do to my 1911s and the reason i do that is because the 1911 round is fully captured all the way through the feeding until it's ejected it comes up when the, when the slide goes forward, most of you know this, slide goes forward, it strips around up, it pulls up and catches it in the extractor, and it rides up the breech face and up the feed ramp and into the chamber. And it's completely captured that whole time. All right, so if that breech face is not polished, that's where you get a lot of your hangups on a lot of guns. So I like to take them and polish that up a little bit, clean it up. This one here is not bad. Um, I didn't really feel the need to polish it last night, and obviously it's working fine. But then I'll take it to the range, and I'll put 250 rounds through it. I'll take it home. I'll strip that thing down again to 100% stripped. I will clean the crap out of it. I will grease him, oil him, lube him back up. I'll take him back out of the range, and I'll put another 200, 250 rounds through it. I'll take it back home, strip it, clean it all up again. And at that time... I would imagine the last 200 to 250 rounds, I feel I'm safe to carry it if those have functioned fine. If in that second 200, 250 rounds that I put through it, I find something wrong, then well, we'll do it again until I get no failures. And I think that we have seen that my little tweaking and putting that spring in there has got this one shooting pretty good. That's 30 yards. I think we can call that a win. All right. If this is the end, I have a little editing I'm doing. If this is the end, I'll say what I always say, folks. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. God bless America. Cornelio out.